Dear students, a warm welcome to VTU e Shikshana Learning Program. In our uh, previous class, we had a discussion on uh, the reference electrodes. We learned how the reference electrodes, calomel electrode and uh, AG -AG AG AGCL electrodes are uh, built, how they are constructed, their uh, working principles and uh, their applications. Then I gave a brief introduction on uh, the ion selective electrodes. So ion selective electrode is uh, one of uh, the types of electrodes which can selectively detect and uh, quantitatively measure a particular ion in a solution, ignoring all the other ions present. So only the name ion selective electrode. So ion selective electrode can selectively detect and uh, quantitatively measure a particular ion in a mixture ignoring all the other ions and it develops a potential and the potential developed is uh, proportional to the concentration of only that particular ion in the solution. Since these electrodes consist of uh, membranes and those membranes are capable of exchanging specific ions with the solutions with which they are in contact, they are also known as membrane electrodes. So ion selective electrodes are also called the membrane electrodes. There are uh, few factors, there are few factors which decide the suitability of the membrane. They are, the membrane should not be polluted by surfactants then uh, it must be chemically stable in solutions of uh, different pH values in organic solvents and uh, reducing and oxidizing environments. It should possess sufficient mechanical strength and the necessary electrical conductance. Then uh, these are the different types of ion selective electrodes. Crystalline, there are two types, crystalline membrane electrodes and uh, non-crystalline membrane electrodes. Crystalline membrane electrodes are of uh, two types, single crystal and uh, polycrystalline. So single crystal, the, the example is lanthanum fluoride for sensing, for measuring uh, fluoride ions. So here the membrane consists of a single lanthanum fluoride, lanthanum fluoride, lanthanum fluoride crystal which is doped with europium fluoride to reduce the bulk resistivity of the crystal. It is selective to fluoride ions and it is only interfered by OH minus ions because OH minus ions react with the lanthanum to form lanthanum hydroxide. Then one more type of uh, crystalline membrane electrodes is uh, polycrystalline or uh, mixed crystal. Example is silver sulphide for uh, measuring for sensing sulphide or uh, Ag plus ions. So these, uh, this, uh, this uh, mi mixed crystal consists of a membrane fabricated with uh, pure or doped silver sulphide. So this is one of the types of uh, ion selective electrodes, crystalline membrane electrodes. Then what are uh, non-crystalline membrane electrodes? Non-crystalline membrane electrodes, glass, then uh, liquid state membranes and uh, immobilized liquid in a rigid polymer, glass. So glass electrode which is made of silicate glass for sensing, for measuring Na plus and uh, H plus ions. Then liquid state membranes, liquid ion exchangers, selective to cations or anions, monocyclic mono crown ethers in hydrocarbon solvents, a calcium sensitive electrode with, which consists of calcium dialkyl phosphoric acid, then immobilized liquid in a rigid polymer, polyvinyl chloride matrix for uh, measuring Ca2 plus and uh, NO3 minus. So glass electrode is uh, selective to H plus ions, therefore it is employed to measure the pH of the solutions. Then what are the applications of these ion selective electrodes? See ion selective electrodes are used to determine the concentration of many cations, okay. Number of cations can be measured their quantity can be measured by employing ion selective electrodes, cations such as H plus, Na plus, 
Li plus, NH4 plus, Ag plus, calcium, magnesium, all these ions can be measured to the, all these the, the ion selective electrodes are uh, used to determine the concentrations of these ions. Then concentration of many anions uh, such as fluoride, chloride, nitrate. Then pH of the solutions can be measured using glass electrode. Then concentration of even concentration of gases can be estimated using gas sensing electrode. So, these are the applications of um, uh, the ion selective electrodes. Now, we shall understand uh, what is the principle involved. Okay? Ion selective electrode usually consists of uh, ion selective membrane. Okay? These ion selective electrodes consist of ion selective membranes in contact with an analyte solution on one side and an internal reference solution on the other side. See, this is a membrane, it consists of an internal standard solution. Okay? It consists of see, a membrane in contact with an analyte solution on one side. So, analyte solution on one side, this is the analyte solution and an internal reference solution on the other side. So, this is the internal reference solution. The internal reference solution is in contact with an internal reference electrode. So, this we should understand, this we should understand clearly. So, this ion selective electrode consists of a membrane in contact with a, an analyte solution. So, this is the solution that requires to be analyzed. So, this is the solution which is under investigation. So, the membrane is in contact with this uh, solution that has to be analyzed and uh, this membrane consists of an internal standard solution, internal reference solution let the concentration of this internal solution be C1. There is one internal solution and this internal reference solution is in contact with an internal reference electrode. So, there will be one internal reference electrode. Membrane, inside the membrane there will be one internal reference solution and this internal reference solution will be in contact with an internal reference electrode. So, for the measurement of concentration of a metal ion using an ion selective electrode, this is the cell which is set up. So, membrane with the internal reference solution and an internal reference electrode. So, this membrane is in contact with the solution which is under investigation. So, a standard solution containing the same ion as the ion under test is prepared and filled in the ion selective electrode. Say for example, let us consider uh, the glass electrode. Glass electrode as I have said uh, is used to measure the pH of the solution. Say I have dipped a glass electrode in a solution containing H plus ions. So, HCl is there in a beaker, in a beaker I have taken uh, hydrochloric acid and uh, the glass electrode membrane is dipped into it. So, this membrane should be filled internally with the same solution. See here a standard solution containing the same ion as the ion under test. So, the internal reference solution will be HCl. It should be a solution containing H plus ions only. A standard solution containing the same ion as the ion under test is prepared and filled in the ion selective electrode. The analyte solution is taken in a beaker, it is taken in a container and the above electrode is dipped into it this electrode containing the internal reference solution, internal standard solution and the internal reference electrode is dipped into it. So, this constitutes a half cell, this is a half cell. Okay? A potential is developed across the membrane which is known as the membrane potential. Okay? A potential is developed across the membrane and uh, it is known as the membrane potential. The potential of this half cell is due to the membrane potential and the reference electrode. So, the potential of uh, this uh, what uh, this uh, um, uh, membrane electrode or the potential of this electrode, this ion selective electrode is due to the membrane electrode and the potential of this internal reference electrode. Is it clear? So, Ion selective electrode consists of ion, um, ion selective membrane in contact with an analyte solution on one side. So, this is the analyte solution 
and an internal reference solution on the other. There will be one internal reference solution. Then this internal reference solution will be in contact with an internal reference electrode. So, this is the membrane, the membrane is filled with uh, the internal reference solution and this internal reference solution is in contact with an internal reference electrode. So, a standard solution containing the same ion as the ion under test. So, this is the solution we have taken for uh, uh, the analysis. So, this standard solution, the internal standard solution containing the same ion as the ion under test, it should contain the same ion okay, as the ion under test is that solution is prepared and it should be filled in the ion selective electrode. So, the analyte solution is taken in a beaker and the above electrode is dipped into it. So, this is nothing but a half cell and this half cell is connected to connected to one more half cell. So, that a cell is formed and we can measure the potential of this cell. Now, we shall see how this uh, the, uh, the glass electrode is uh, constructed. So, as I said uh, this is one of the examples of uh, ion selective electrodes. So, this electrode is uh, responsive towards H plus ions. Okay. It is selective to H plus ion and uh, uh, this electrode develops a potential proportional to the concentration of only the H plus ions and it uh, neglects all the other ions present in the solution. Therefore, it is extensively used to measure the pH of the solution. It is employed to measure the pH of the solutions and it is the oldest and the most widely used electrode. Okay, it is the most widely used electrode for the pH determination. Then uh, how, how is it constructed? So, it consists of a long uh, glass tube. Okay, this is a glass tube with a thin walled bulb at one end. So, a glass tube with a thin uh, walled bulb. Okay, the glass bulb is filled with a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. Usually, this bulb, this is the bulb, it is filled with 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. So, 0.1 molar HCl is the internal reference solution. This is the internal reference solution. So, I have already told now the membrane is filled with uh, uh, an internal reference solution and in this glass electrode the internal reference solution is 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. So, it is the internal reference or internal standard solution and there will be one internal reference electrode. So, this internal reference solution is in contact with uh, an internal reference electrode and that internal reference electrode is silver silver chloride electrode AG AGCL electrode. We have learnt uh, it is uh, construction, working, working principle, then uh, the applications. So, AG, AGCL is one of the widely used second reference electrodes. It is used as the internal reference electrode in the glass electrode. So, the glass bulb contains usually 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid as the internal reference solution. Silver silver chloride electrode is employed as the internal reference electrode and it is dipped in the solution. So, it also serves for the external electrical contact. So, this uh, AG AGCL electrode also serves for the external electrical contact. And what about the composition of uh, this glass? Okay, this is the composition sodium oxide 22 percent, calcium oxide 6 percent and the remaining 72 percent is silica. Na2O 22 percent, CaO 6 percent, SaO2 72 percent. So, it has a low melting point, high electrical conductance and can sense H plus ions up to a pH of about 9. Then how the electrode is uh, represented, how to represent this uh, uh, electrode? We know now how to, how the electrodes, calomel electrode and the silver silver electrodes are represented. 
hg hg2cl2 slash cl minus okay the similarly ag agcl cl minus similarly even this electrode is represented as ag slash agcl 0 0.1 0.1 molar hcl slash glass this is how the electrode the glass electrode is represented ag agcl 0 0.1 molar hcl slash glass membrane okay so how this uh, glass electrode is constructed it consists of a glass tube with uh, uh, a bulb thin bulb thin walled bulb at one end and this bulb is filled with uh, internal reference solution and that internal reference solution in case of glass electrode is 0 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid and uh, there is one internal reference electrode it is nothing but the silver silver chloride electrode so this is nothing but a half cell okay this arrangement constitutes a half cell and what about the composition of this glass sodium oxide 22 percent calcium oxide 6 percent and the remaining 72 percent is silica okay and uh, this is how the electrode is represented silver silver chloride 0 0.1 molar hcl and uh, uh, silver silver chloride 0 0.1 molar hcl glass membrane now how this uh, glass electrode operates uh, we shall see how the glass electrode operates see this uh, the h plus ions see here the h plus ion this is the analyte solution containing the h plus ions and even this internal reference solution has uh, h plus ions right so the analyte since it is used to measure the ph of the solutions obviously this solution will be having uh, uh, the h plus ions and the internal reference uh, uh, solution is uh, always 0 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid so even uh, this internal reference solution will be having uh, the h plus ions the h plus ions of the solutions are exchanged with the na plus ions of the membrane so the composition of the we have seen the composition of the membrane it is uh, sodium oxide 22 percent calcium oxide 6 percent and uh, uh, silica SiO2 72 percent so this na plus ions of the membrane are continuously exchanged with the h plus ions of the solutions that is what i have shown here h plus ions will be initially in the solution and uh, na plus ions are with the glass membrane so these na plus ions of the membrane are exchanged with the h plus ions of the solution so this exchange continuously takes place okay so this is reversible exchange h plus ions initially or in the solution and uh, these uh, na plus ions are with uh, this membrane so na plus the membrane releases the Na plus ions and takes up the H plus ions. So, continuously this exchange takes place. So, the exchange of ions by the inner and outer membranes. So, internally as well as uh, uh, externally. So, this uh, exchange will be taking place due to this exchange. See the exchange of ions by the inner and outer membrane gives rise to a boundary potential. Okay gives rise to a boundary potential and this boundary potential consists of two potentials E1 and E2. I have shown here. So, E1 here and E2 here, okay. E1 here and E2 here. Let the concentration of the internal solution be C1 and the concentration of the, uh, the solution under investigation be C2, okay. So, the, it is the internal solution this is the internal solution and this is the solution under investigation the con the concentration of the internal electrolyte or the internal reference solution is uh, c1 and uh, let the concentration of uh, the external solution be c2 so potentials develop e1 and e2 the potential that develops inside the membrane is e1 and i have represented the potential that develops outside the membrane as e2 so this potential develops due to the continuous exchange of ions like this H plus ions of the solution are exchanged with the Na plus ions of the membrane. 
since continuously the exchange will be taking place, a potential develops. It gives rise to a potential and that potential is called the boundary potential. So, the exchange of ions by the inner and outer membrane gives rise to a boundary potential and this boundary potential consists of E1 and E2, two potentials E1 and E2. Okay, the potential that the potential values that develop inside and outside the membrane. So, then uh, what is uh, the boundary potential? Boundary potential is the potential, it is the difference in the potential values which develop inside and outside the membrane. Therefore, it is E2 minus E1, Eb is equal to E2 minus E1 by applying Nernst equation RT divided by F ln C2 divided by ln C1. Therefore, Eb is equal to RT divided by F ln C2 minus RT divided by F ln C1. Okay. Then uh, what is C1? See here, C1 is always constant, C1 is always 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid because this glass membrane, this glass bulb is usually usually filled with 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. Therefore, the value of C1 is always constant, it is 0.1. Therefore, since C1 is constant, this is constant, C1 is constant, gas constant, then F Faraday's constant and at 298 Kelvin. So, all the terms are constant only. So, instead of writing this RT minus RT divided by F ln C1, I have written constant. So, what is this constant? This constant is minus RT divided by F ln C1. So, instead of minus RT divided by F ln C1, I have written constant because C1 is always constant and these values are also constant only. Now, we shall substitute the values of R and F. We all know the values of uh, this uh, R and F, 8.3143 joule per Kelvin per mole and 96,500 coulomb per mole at 298 Kelvin. So, substitute these values after substituting these values and uh, converting the natural logarithm to base 10, ln to base 10 Eb is equal to L plus 0 0.0591 log C2. Okay. We can uh, substitute and check this we will be getting E b is equal to L plus 0 0.0591 log C2. What is this L? L is nothing but a constant which depends on the pH of the solution taken in the bulb and the glass electrode assembly. Okay. L is, this is constant. Okay. Instead of writing constant, I have written L here. Then uh, what is C2? See in this diagram, what is C2? This is C2, right? This is C2 and what this C2 is? C2 is nothing but the concentration of H plus ion because this glass electrode we have employed to measure the pH of the solution. Therefore, C2 is H plus concentration of H plus of the solution. And what is negative logarithm to base 10 of H plus? Minus log to base 10 of H plus is pH. We all know very well, pH is the negative logarithm to the base 10 of H plus ion concentration. So, then what this equation will become? Eb is equal to, we know, we have, see, we have derived till here, Eb is equal to L plus 0 0.0591 log C2 and what the C2 is? C2 is H plus and we know that minus log to base 10 of H plus is pH. So, what is plus log to base 10 of H plus? Then it will be minus pH. See here, the equation 1 becomes since minus log to base 10 of H plus is pH, equation 1. So, that, that was equation 1. Equation 1 becomes Eb is equal to L minus 0 0.0591 pH. Right? This is the boundary potential which develops at the boundary of uh, the membrane. Okay? So, we know that uh, Eb is equal to E2 minus V1. Right? 
E b is the boundary potential is the difference in the potential values which develop uh, inside the membrane as well as outside the membrane E 2 minus E 1 correct. So, what this uh, E 2 is and what is E 1? So, based on Nernst equation it is R t divided by f ln C 2 divided by ln C 1. When C 1 is equal to C 2, it is quite often possible, no? even the concentration of the external solution may be 0.1 molar only. We would not be knowing the concentration of this solution. We have taken this solution for investigation, even it may be of 0 0.1 molar concentration only. In such cases, what should happen when C 1 is equal to C 2, E b should become 0, right? because E b is equal to E 2 minus E 1, it is R t divided by f ln C 2 by C 1. When C 1 is equal to C 2, this should become 0. So, theoretically this should be 0, but it is not 0. See here, this we should understand. E b is equal to E 2 minus E 1. Okay? When C 1 is equal to C 2, when the concentration of the external solution concentration of the solution that has to be analyzed is equal to the concentration of the internal solution. The internal reference solution is 0 0.1 molar HCl. When the concentration of the external solution is also 0 0.1 only, then this E b should be 0. So, theoretically E b value should become 0, but it is not true. See, I have uh, mentioned here, it is not true due to asymmetric potential, asymmetric potential, asymmetric potential develops due to the difference in curvature of the glass. So, why E b is not equal to 0 even when C 1 is equal to C 2? It is because when C 1, even when C 1 is equal to C 2, one more potential develops and it is called the asymmetric potential. This asymmetric potential results from physical differences between the inner and outer surfaces of the glass membrane, okay, leading to inner and outer potentials for the same H plus activity. Even though the concentration values of the internal solutions and the external solution, the external, I mean the analyte solutions are same, one more potential develops okay, and it is called the asymmetric potential. Therefore, what is E g? E g is the glass electrode potential, potential of glass electrode. E g is the sum of E b, the boundary potential and uh, here I have told now in this diagram, one reference electrode, one internal reference electrode is there. So, even that also contributes to the overall potential of the glass electrode. Therefore, E b, I am sorry, E g is equal to E b boundary potential plus E a g a g c l. Okay? E a g a g c l is the potential of the silver silver chloride electrode, E a g a g c l electrode which is used as the internal reference electrode plus E asymmetric potential. So, this asymmetric potential which uh, results due to the difference in curvature of the glass. Okay? And uh, we have derived now what uh, this uh, uh, E b is. E b is, see here according to this uh, equation 2, E b is L minus 0 0.0591 pH. Uh, substitute the value of, uh, uh, substitute 2 in 1, 2 in this, uh, not in 1, in uh, this uh, 3. So, E g is equal to L minus 0 0.0591 pH plus E a g a g c L plus E a g a g c L plus E a s y. Okay? So, L minus 0 0.0591 pH plus E a g a g c L plus E a s y. And uh, L is, what is this L? L is a constant, right? Here I have shown L is a constant instead of this, uh, this minus R t divided by F ln C 1, we have represented this whole uh, factor minus R t divided by F uh, ln C 1 as L. Uh, so, this is the value of L, okay, which is nothing but a constant. Then, EMF of uh, 
the silver silver chloride electrode is also constant only why because it is a reference electrode so we all know very well that uh, reference electrode is the one whose potential is uh, constant okay so the potential of silver silver chloride electrode is constant and uh, even this asymmetric potential is constant for a particular uh, glass electrode so all the three l eag agcl and even easy are constant so instead of writing l eag agcl plus i am sorry easy we shall write it as l1 therefore eg is equal to l1 minus 0.0591 ph then what is this l1 l1 is again a constant only and it is equal to l plus eag agcl plus easy so this is the potential of the glass electrode this is how the glass electrode develops a potential and uh, this potential depends on the concentration of the ions under investigation let me brief once again so it consists of a glass tube filled with an internal reference solution and uh, it is uh, immersed in a solution which is under investigation having the h plus ions and uh, this is how the electrode is represented ag agcl 0.1 molar hcl uh, glass membrane and uh, due to the exchange of ions see in this slide the ions are h plus ions of the solution solution present inside as well as outside the membrane are exchanged with the na plus ions of uh, the membrane the glass membrane because uh, the composition of uh, the membrane the glass membrane is sodium oxide calcium oxide and uh, silica so the sodium ion the sodium ions of the membrane are exchanged with the h plus ions of uh, the solutions so due to this exchange due to this continuous exchange potentials develop inside and uh, outside the membrane uh, we have represented the potential that develops uh, potential that develops inside the membrane as e1 and the potential that develops outside the membrane as e2 and let the concentration of uh, the internal electrolyte is uh, internal electrolyte be c1 and uh, the external electrolyte be c2 then uh, Uh, the boundary potential will be the difference in the potential values uh, that develop inside and outside the membranes so eb is equal to mathematically it is e2 minus e1 by applying nernst equation rt divided by f ln c2 divided by ln c1 therefore eb is equal to rt divided by f ln c2 minus rt divided by n nf rt divided by f ln c1 okay rt divided by f ln c2 minus rt divided by f ln c1 so this is constant why because c1 is always constant so in this glass electrode c1 is since c1 is usually 0.1 molar hcl it is constant and even these values are constant only therefore eb is equal to constant plus rt divided by f ln c2 therefore eb is equal to l plus 0.0591 log c2 so l is a constant and it depends on the concentration of the pH of the solution taken in the bulb and uh, the uh, glass electrode membrane. Since C two is equal to uh, the concentration of H plus, and uh, we know very well that pH is the negative log to the base ten of H plus ion concentration. We can write E B as L minus zero point zero five nine one pH. Okay, so um, E B now is L minus zero point zero five nine one pH. but uh, we know that eb is equal to e2 minus e1 when c1 is equal to c2 when the concentration of the external solution is equal to the concentration of the internal reference solution theoretically c1 should be equal to um, when c1 is equal to c2 the theoretically this eb should be zero but it is not true eb is not equal to zero even when c1 is equal to c2 due to asymmetric potential As asymmetric potential develops due to the physical differences between the inner and outer surfaces of the glass membrane okay therefore eg is the sum of eb eag agcl and asymmetric potential therefore eg is l minus this boundary potential value is l minus 0.0591 ph plus eag agcl plus easy 
So, all the three are constant, L is a constant and EMF of uh, the glass electrode, um, sorry EMF of the silver silver chloride electrode is uh, again uh, uh, constant only and even asymmetric potential is constant for uh, a given uh, for the given uh, glass electrode. Instead of these three constants, we shall represent these three constants as L1, therefore Eg is equal to L1 minus 0 0.0591 pH which is equal to L plus EAGAGCL plus EASY. This is how the glass electrode develops a potential. So, now we have learnt the construction working principle and uh, the uh, what the development of potential on uh, the glass electrode. So, now we shall see how the pH is determined making use of glass electrode with the help of glass electrode how to determine the pH of the solutions. This is the um, what the arrangement required to measure the pH of the solutions. Okay. Since that glass electrode is a half cell it has to be coupled with one more half cell. So, this is connected to a reference, it should be connected to a reference electrode. So, glass electrode is connected to saturated uh, calomel electrode. We know what uh, saturated calomel electrode is, it is uh, one of the widely used secondary reference electrodes. We have learnt its uh, construction working principle, right. So, it is a, a secondary reference electrode connected to the glass electrode. So, glass electrode this is the glass electrode, glass electrode with uh, internal reference solution, this is the internal reference solution and uh, this is the internal uh, reference electrode. So, this internal reference solution is 0 0.1 molar HCl and the internal reference electrode is uh, AG, AGCl electrode, so glass electrode and this is the solution of unknown pH. So, this is the analyte solution that requires to be analyzed for its uh, pH value. So, this is connected to uh, um, what the one more connected to saturated calomel electrode the what the, it is the other half cell used. So, this arrangement is now nothing but a cell. So, saturated calomel electrode this is mercury paste of mercury, mercurous chloride and KCl then uh, uh, saturated uh, since it is saturated calomel electrode saturated solution of uh, KCl is uh, uh, used in it and the potential of this uh, saturated calomel electrode is 0. Point, we remember very well it is 0. 0.2422 volt, 0. 0.2422 volt is the potential of uh, the saturated uh, calomel electrode. So, this is nothing but a cell. How to represent the cell? This is how the cell is represented, so, okay. cell representation. So, uh, by convention here uh, uh, the glass electrode is uh, cathode. So, anode should be written on the left, saturated calomel electrode SCE, so, uh, slash a solution of unknown concentration. So, this the pH has to be determined, okay. pH uh, should be measured slash a glass membrane or we can write it as uh, HG, HG 2 Cl 2. KCL slash solution of unknown pH, solution of unknown pH slash we know now how the glass electrode is represented AG, AGCL 0 0.1, 0 point, uh, 0 point AG, AGCL. Mm, 0. Point AG, AGCL 0. 0.1 molar HCL slash glass. Okay, we can write uh, like this or in this way also. SCE solution of unknown concentration glass membrane. Okay. 
then the emf of uh, this cell emf of the cell is uh, measured potentiometrically by potentiometric method as i have already told this is uh, this arrangement is nothing but a cell and we all know very well that uh, e cell is equal to e right electrode minus e left electrode it is e cathode minus e anode isn't it so e cell that's what i have written here e cell is equal to e cathode minus e anode e cell is equal to the cathode here the cathode is the glass electrode e glass minus e se saturated calomel electrode and uh, we have derived eg is equal to l1 minus 0 point we know that eg is equal to l1 minus 0 point 0 0.091 ph where l1 is equal to l plus e a g a g c l plus e a s y we shall uh, substitute the value of uh, uh, eg here eg is equal to l1 minus 0 point 0 0.091 ph therefore e cell is equal to l1 minus 0 point 0 0.091 ph minus 0 0.2422 what is this 0 0.2422 it is nothing but the potential of the saturated calomel electrode the secondary reference electrode right so then what is ph ph is equal to l1 minus 0 0.2422 minus e cell divided by 0 0.0591 so this is how a cell is constructed by combining the glass electrode with uh, uh, second reference electrode uh, saturated calomel electrode okay this side tube we all know very well acts as salt bridge okay uh, and uh, the emf of the cell is measured uh, potentiometrically e cell is equal to e cathode minus uh, e anode and the cathode here is uh, the glass electrode e glass minus e sce saturated calomel electrode and uh, we have derived the value of uh, eg and it is l1 minus 0 0.0591 ph so esl becomes l1 minus 0 0.0591 ph minus 0 0.2422 this 0 0.2422 is nothing but the potential of the saturated calomel electrode therefore ph is equal to l1 minus 0 0.2422 minus e cell divided by 0 0.0591 this is how the ph values of the solution is measured making use of the glass electrode now we shall see what are the advantages the advantages and uh, uh, the limitations of uh, the glass electrode these are the advantages it is a stable electrode system and can be used in the presence of uh, even strong oxidizing and uh, reducing substances it is portable it is compact it is not uh, poisoned easily then uh, the simple to operate and it can be used uh, even in the presence of viscous biological fluids it can be used in portable instruments it can detect and estimate h plus in presence of other types of ions because it is selective to only h plus ions accurate results are obtained between the ph range 1 and 9 however by using special glass electrode ph from 1 to 14 can be measured so these are the advantages okay it is portable compact a stable electrode system can it can be employed even in the presence of strong oxidizing and reducing agents operation is quite simple and uh, it can be used in the presence of viscous biological fluids it can be used in portable instruments and it can detect h plus ions in the presence of uh, even other ions accurate results are measured between ph 1 and 9 and by employing a special glass electrodes it is possible to measure the ph from 1 to 14 and uh, is there any limitation see these are the limitations the electrode can be used up to ph 13 but becomes sensitive to na plus above ph 9 okay it becomes uh, it can be measured but uh, above it can be measured till a ph of 13 but uh, what happens is above the ph value of 9 it will start sensing even na plus ion leading to alkaline error okay it results in alkaline error then the glass membrane is very thin so it must be handled carefully the glass membrane is very thin hence it must be handled with utmost care 
fluoride ions in the test solution attack the glass surface and alter the composition of the membrane. Okay. Fluoride ions in the test that are present in the test solution attack the glass surface and uh, they alter the composition of the membrane and it does not uh, function satisfactorily in pure alcohols. Due to high resistance of glass, simple potentiometers cannot be used. So, this requires sensitive electronic potentiometers for the EMF measurements and in acidic solution of pH 1, the salt effects due to an anions, the salt effects are observed. So, these are the limitations or we can say the disadvantages of the glass electrode. Now, we shall see how the pKa, how the pKa value of a weak acid is uh, determined using pH meter. So, this uh, glass electrode is uh, used to measure the pH of the solutions. Just now, we have understood how the pH values are measured making use of uh, the glass electrode. Now, we shall see how the pKa value of weak acids are uh, uh, determined using pH meter making use of uh, the glass electrode. See the strength of an acid is uh, the strength of an acid is experimentally measured by determining its equilibrium constant Ka. Since strong acids are strong electrolytes, they undergo complete ionization, they ionize completely in aqueous solutions. It is not possible, it is not meaningful to study the ionic equilibrium of strong acids and calculate the equilibrium constants. As the unionized form in case of strong acids is present to a very small extent because they undergo ionization completely strong acids. Hence, the study of ionic equilibriums and calculation of Ka is applicable to only weak acids which undergo incomplete dissociation. Say for example, formic acid ionizes as See HCOH ionizes as H3O plus and uh, HCOO minus. Okay. So, this is Ka. Then what is pKa? pKa is the negative logarithm to the base 10 of Ka. Okay. pKa is the negative log to the base 10 of the dissociation constant Ka. So, during the titration of an acid with a base, the pH of the solution increases rapidly, it, it rises, it increases uh, gradually at first in the beginning slowly the pH value increases, then uh, rapidly it starts, rapidly it increases. Okay. Until at the equivalence point there is a very sharp increase in the pH. Okay. At the equivalence point there will be a sudden increase in the pH of the solution upon the addition of suitable base. Once the equivalence point is reached, pH increases slightly on addition of excess base. After reaching the equivalence point, even after the addition of the base, the pH value slowly increases. So, this is the, the arrangement required. I have already explained this. So, no need of uh, giving explanation again here. So, it consists of uh, the glass electrode and uh, the calomel electrode, okay. combined glass electrode assembly is used which consists of uh, uh, glass electrode as well as uh, the calomel electrode. Okay. So, E cell, it, uh, this, these two are connected to a potentiometer which measures the potential of the solution and uh, in turn that is converted into pH value. Then uh, uh, the titration is carried out, how to carry out the titration? See, NaOH is uh, added say in the increment of uh, 0.1 ml, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 like this sodium hydroxide is added from a burette. Then the pH change in the pH values is uh, noted say in the beginning I have taken uh, acetic acid. Um, a measured volume of acetic acid I have taken in a beaker and this uh, glass electrode assembly, the combined electrodes assembly is dipped into it. So, it uh, they say the, in, the initial value is 3.1 upon the addition of 0 0.1 uh, 
ml of uh, HCl, the value increases 3.3. Again, 0.2 ml is added, it increases to 3.45. Like this, it increases. Okay. So, slowly the value, we should keep adding the solution. So, then we need to calculate the titration is carried out till we reach the equivalence point, we will be getting a, a huge increase in the pH value say at uh, 0 0.6. Uh, mm, mm, Five point nine eight, and at uh, point seven, it increases. It increases to um, nine point eight. So even after getting the equivalence point, the titration is continued. Say, then delta pH values are calculated. Okay. So for this trial, this minus this three point three minus three point one. It is 0 0.2 and for this trial, this minus this difference between the consecutive pH values. Then delta pH divided by delta V is calculated. So, firstly, a graph of delta pH or delta V versus volume of NaOH is plotted. Okay. So, this gives us the equivalence point. So, equivalence point here is the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the given volume of the weak acid. So, from this graph we will be getting the equivalence point and one more graph is plotted, one more graph between pH values and the volume of NaOH, okay. pH and the volume of NaOH. So, um, a graph of pH versus volume of NaOH is plotted. Okay. So, like this a sigmoid curve we are going to get, then the equivalence point, equivalence point is marked here okay. and uh, half of it, half equivalence point is marked and uh, pH corresponding to the half equivalence point is nothing but pKa, because is, it is based on uh, this determination is based on Henderson Hasselbach equation. Okay. Henderson Hasselbach equation is pH is equal to pKa plus log to the base 10 of molar concentration of salt divided by the concentration of acid. So, this is the mathematical expression of Henderson Hasselbach equation pH is equal to pKa plus log to base 10 of the concentration of salt upon the concentration of uh, the acid. So, at half equivalence point, half of the acid is converted into its uh, salt. So, half of the acid is, since half of the acid is converted into its salt, this becomes log 1, therefore it becomes 0, therefore at half equivalence point pH is equal to pKa. This is how the pKa values of uh, weak acids are uh, estimated or I am sorry are determined with the help of uh, the glass electrodes. So, in today's class we have understood what are uh, ion selective electrodes, then how the glass electrode is uh, constructed and how it operates, what is the working principle of uh, a glass electrode, how it develops uh, a potential. Then uh, we have seen how the pH values are determined with the help of uh, the glass electrodes, the advantages of uh, glass electrodes and uh, the limitations of glass electrodes we have uh, learnt. And uh, just now we have understood how the pKa values of weak acids are determined with the help of the glass electrode. Thank you.